Hi, everybody. It's Miss Page. Um, today, I was going to share a book with you guys that I read when I was in elementary school, and it's called The Man Who Didn't Wash His Dishes. Um, it was written in 1950, so I want you guys to think about um, what the math is. It's 2020, and it was written in 1950. So how old is this book? So you get a little math while we're reading. Um, also, there's a couple of words in there that might be confusing. The one word I want to point out is cellar, and cellar is another word for basement. And basement is an area underneath your house where some people store stuff. Sometimes people have basements where you it's another room that you can live in. Um, and then the other word is closet. So they'll use closet a couple times. Obviously, you guys know that closet is uh, where you store your clothes um, or shoes or whatever you might, or you might have a closet with towels in it. In this book, he has a closet for his dishes and his pots and pans. And so in this book, um, it means cabinet also. So those are just a couple of the words I wanted to point out before we got started. And um, let's see. We'll get started then. So this is called The Man Who Didn't Wash His Dishes. And the author is Phyllis Krasilowski, and it is illustrated by Barbara Cooney. And an illustrator is a person who draws the pictures. So the pictures were drawn by Barbara Cooney. There once was a man who lived all alone in a little house on the edge of a town. He didn't have any wife or children, so he always cooked his own supper, cleaned the house by himself, and made his own bed. One night he came home hungrier than usual, so he made himself a big, big supper. It was a very good supper. He liked to cook and could make good things to eat. But there was so much of it that he grew very, very tired by the time he had finished. He just sat back in his chair as full as he could be and decided he'd leave the dishes till the next night and then he would wash them all at once. But the next night he was twice as hungry, so he cooked twice as big a supper and took twice as long to eat it, and he was twice as tired by the time he had finished. And he left those dishes in the sink too. Well, as the days went by, he got hungrier and hungrier and more and more tired, and so he never washed his dishes. After a while, there were so many dirty dishes that they didn't all fit in the sink, so he began to pile them on the table. Soon the table was so full that he began to put them on his bookshelves, and when they were full, he put them just everywhere he could find an empty place. Soon he had them all piled on the floor, too. In fact, the floor got to be so full of dishes that he had a hard time getting into his house at night. They were even piled against the door. Then one night he looked in his closet and found there wasn't one clean dish left. He was hungry enough to eat out of anything, so he ate out of the soap dish from the bathroom. It was too dirty for him to use again the next night, so he used one of his ashtrays. Pretty soon he had used up all his ashtrays. Then he ate out of some clean flower pots he found down the cellar. When they were all used up, he ate out of his candy dishes and drank water from vases. He used up everything finally, even the pots he cooked his food in, and he didn't know what to do. He was so unhappy. His whole house was full of dirty dishes and dirty flower pots and dirty ashtrays and dirty candy dishes. 
and dirty pots and a dirty soap dish. He couldn't even find his books or his alarm clock or even his bed anymore. He couldn't sit down to think because even his chairs were filled with dishes and he couldn't find the sink so he could wash them. But then, all of a sudden, it began to rain, and the man got an idea. He drove his big truck around to the side of the house and piled all the dishes and all the vases and all the flower pots and all the ashtrays and all the candy dishes and the soap dish on it and drove the truck out into the rain. The rain fell on everything, and soon they were clean again. The rain had washed them. Then the man carried everything back in the house again. He put the dishes in the dish closet, the pots in the pot closet, the ashtrays on the tables, and the candy dishes on the shelves, the flower pots in the cellar, the vases where the vases go, and the soap dish in the bathroom. He was so very, very tired after carrying everything back and putting it away that he decided that from then on, he would always wash his dishes just as soon as he had finished his supper. The next night when he came home, he cooked his supper, and when he had finished eating it, he washed the dishes and put them right away. He did this every night after that, too. He is very happy now. He can find his chairs, and he can find his alarm clock, and he can find his bed. It is easy for him to get into his house, too, because there are no more dishes piled on the floor or anywhere. The end. So that was the man who could, didn't wash his dishes. And... um. I sort of want you guys to think about something you can infer or guess about the story. Um, what do you infer about what kind of job the gentleman had in the book? Um, sort of think about from details in the story what you can guess his job was. Um, also, I would like you guys to ask a parent or look up the word procrastination because that's what this book is about. Um, and it's a good lesson in all of our lives. So I hope you enjoyed the story. I miss you guys all very much. And I hope I'll read another story next week. Um, the story I have in mind next week is similar to this one. Um, so there'll be some similarities and differences. So maybe we can talk about those. Um, we'll talk to you guys later. Bye.